Hello everyone. As we go through the Anxiety Cure series, hopefully you're little by little starting to unravel the anxiety mystery. You're starting to get more and more confidence, building perhaps hope around what you can do to really recover from the state that you're in. Today's session is all about getting to know yourself and getting to know your symptoms as well as your triggers. One of the key things to really taking ownership of your, your recovery journey is to do the thing that can actually feel really hard, to intimately get to know yourself and those really unpleasant, at times scary symptoms that lead to panic, anxiety states, OCD, other things as well. And it can, it can feel really odd to do that because often, you know, people ask me, well, I know my symptoms, they're mine. But what we're often doing is we're trying to white knuckle it. We're trying to hold on for dear life as that surge of anxiety comes, as that um, those intrusive thoughts come, if it's to do with obsessions, as we think about going into the outside world or entering a social engagement, if it's social anxiety, we um, the symptoms come, but we just try and hold on until they until we somehow randomly feel better. The problem with that is that we're, we're pushing down, we're suppressing, we're not releasing all this pent up energy. And we're trying to really control our flight or fight. The flight or fight's sort of trying to trigger and we're taking it very seriously and trying to deflect, run away from the symptoms. We're just trying to hide them, bury them, ignore, desperately ignore. But the problem is it's adding tension to tension. It's actually paradoxically making our system even more and more sensitized um, tired fatigue so that the flight or fight then is going to activate more and more so you're going to get more unpleasant symptoms which connect to these thoughts these worrying thoughts all these what if thoughts that we have you know what's going to happen tomorrow what happens if i panic in public what happens if i panic if i go to work what happens if i can't cope what happens you know all these million million and one scenarios that we all have running through our head so i encourage you for this video to have a pen and paper handy and start to write down all the physical symptoms that you get of anxiety or the related states, as I've mentioned, the physical symptoms, first and foremost, the emotional symptoms or any behaviors that you, that you have in regard to this, because when we make something really familiar to us, we demystify it and we start to take a lot of the fear away from it. We, we know, are no longer bewildered by what is going on with our bodies. It's the feelings, these really hard feelings. We feel really rough. We feel that deep fear in the, in the pit of our stomach. The heart races and we feel highly anxious. It's the feelings that give our worrying thoughts a lot of meaning. If we didn't have these physical symptoms of stress or anxiety, we, if we felt really calm in our bodies, then a lot of the, the worrying thoughts that we have would have far less power. Often we attribute the anxious thinking to the worries, to the money situation. What if I lose my job? What if something happens to the kids at school? We, we attribute to it, to all these external factors. But what I'm trying to, uh, to get across in this video is that actually it's how we feel feel that we've really got to deal with first and foremost if we want to recover from anxiety. So again, we've got to make the unfamiliar or what we're trying to avoid very familiar so we can become the experts in our own recovery journey. So again, writing down all your physical symptoms, every one of them, and some may be known to you, some may be so subtle or become so normal that you're not even aware of it. So I'll talk about mine, for example. Me, I'm very much the heart beating, palpitations, skip beats, um, sweaty palms, feeling sick in the stomach, sometimes just general t chest tension, a lump in the throat. Some people get headaches, the muscles clamping down on their head, sometimes blurred vision. Um, a whole range of different symptoms, including burning sensations, general muscle aches pins and needles, these feelings of unreal um, derealization. So feeling like you're not quite there, which can be a very odd sensation, but you, of course is all completely normal when it comes to anxiety. Uh, the more we write down again, when they come up and happen the next time, they're going to be less scary because we're already starting to be familiar with them. We're going to talk through in another, another video, what do you do when you're experiencing the symptoms? But 
First of all, we've got to get really familiar. So again, physical symptoms, then emotions, fear, worry, anxiety, anger. You know, what are your emotions that come up? You might be a little bit irritable, feel a bit edgy. You want to withdraw, go quiet, hide. What are those emotions that come up for you when, um, when you're triggered by something? And then also the final thing is your behavior. So what do you do? Do you, what do you do? Do you try and run away? Do you try and, you know, jump on the treadmill and, and generally and run away from the symptoms? Do you go for the food? Do you just endlessly scroll so you can avoid the feelings? You can distract yourself. Um, some people maybe do a meditation. Maybe you have some really positive things that you do to try and allow yourself to move through the feelings that come up with these symptoms. So note down what are your behaviours, maybe the useful behaviours and maybe the less helpful behaviours. We're trying not to run away from symptoms. We're trying not to fight them. We're not trying, maybe, maybe you try and use willpower to push through. We're trying to become really familiar with them and know that all that's happening is our flight or fights activated for all the reasons I've outlined in one of the first videos I've done. So with that understanding, we can hopefully start to not take these symptoms so seriously and we can start to not to run from them, not try and fight them, not try and desperately distract ourselves, which is what keeps these anxiety cycles going. If you can, and I encourage you to do all of this when you're feeling calmer, write down what your triggers are. So what are the triggers that might trigger some of the physical symptoms? Is it watching something on TV, something that maybe is scary or difficult on TV. It can be a smell. It can be a reminder of something from the past. It can be the thought of having to go into work. It's the thought of that social occasion. It's the thought of having to um, eat some food or, or, or whatever it is. The, the, the triggers are going to be different for all of us. So we want to be really gentle with ourselves as we do this and, and do it when you're feeling calmer, not when you're feeling in a high, a high state of anxiety, but starting to, again, demystify and become familiar with your triggers. So again, when it's happening, we're less in shock, we're less be bewildered. And so we can hopefully have more presence of mind to do something about it. So this might really seem, seem really simple, but it's important that we do do this work. We take the time to become really familiar. Often we want the quick fix, we want the cure. This is part of the cure, becoming really familiar with your state so you can see through it, so you cannot be so beholden to how you feel and start to make different choices. So I hope that makes sense. I just wanted to add on before I finish, if you've not been to the GP to get a general physical health check, it's really useful to do that because um, to establish your baseline level of health, because all the physical symptoms, of anxiety, panic and other things, heart racing, palpitations, shortness of breath, muscle tension, headaches, et cetera, et cetera. They all mimic real world, real physical health conditions. And so I encourage all my clients, if you've not done to have a checkup, just to get the checkup. So hopefully you get the all clear from the GP. And then it's gonna give you permission to work with the symptoms and put them neatly and firmly in the anxiety box. If you've never got a check, never been checked out or it's been a while, then sometimes we can go, well, is it, is it, is it just anxiety or is it something else? And that's an, a health anxiety, which is its own category of anxieties that people can struggle with. So I just wanted to add that on to the end. If you haven't had a general checkup just for peace of mind, do that because it will allow you to practice and do all the work that we're doing in all these videos a lot easier. As always, please let me know if you've got any questions um, or comments, if I'm not covering something you want to hear. But otherwise, I wish you all the best and, and keep re-watching these videos as often as you need. See you next time.